Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to continue with the Idea Romantic uh, Partner Series. And I was uh, actually responding, I was reading a comment and while someone was thanking me for the video that they were uh, they were reacting to. And, and somehow the name of my bias of NCT127 Utah uh, came uh, and, and this person very humbly very nice he was like oh please if you have time can you can you do a reading for, for him and I was I think I was like a few minutes before I was like okay I'm going to be doing a reading that I want for myself in the sense that I don't I'm not going to perform the reading on myself but about my bias that I I think I haven't read for him um, in, in this in this romantic series and actually no one requested uh, Utah, so I was like, oh, I'm going to be selfish this time. I'm going to read for him because I want to know. So, uh, so yes, this reading is going to be about uh, NCT 127 Utah. So I hope that you are a fan of him, uh, that you can, or that if you are a fan of, of the guys, uh, the band in general, that you can show your support. And of course, if you know uh, Utah a bit more. If you're an NCT and you know Utah better than than what actually I'm saying here, um, you can actually your feedback would really help me. Um, because you know, here's the thing. I started doing readings for NCT members, especially the personality readings, the personality and general reading. And at, back then, a few months ago, like I wasn't really into NCT content or NCT music. So um, like I did the reading, but from a very uh, detached kind of like, uh, which actually is great for me because the less I know about them, the that's how, how much I can connect from a very neutral kind of side. Of course, I always try to stay neutral. Uh, but I cannot help but to tell you that yes, I'm going to be reading for my bias. Uh, and I'm sad that no one actually asked me before this person mentioned him. So yes, you're going to have to bear with me because today is Utah Day. Uh, so let's talk a bit about his energy. He is uh, a Scorpio with the moon in a Scorpio. So definitely here it's, um, and his Venus is also in Scorpio. So here's the reason why I resonate so much with you, so much with Utah. Um, I am a Scorpio moon myself, but uh, I think that I have a huge admiration for someone that is a double Scorpio in the sense that he's a sun and, uh, and a moon. So he, he must be uh, very intense uh, and he must be very emotional and very like uh, that uh, Plutonian energy must be really, um, it's difficult to express your emotions even though you're feeling so much inside, you know. So there's a sense of, you know, about a, Scor a Scorpio energy that is always misunderstood in the, in the part of saying that, oh yes, they love sex or they are very sexual and they are very passionate and and they are obsessive you know and i don't think i i feel uh, about this i mean i mean me having a lot of placements in a scorpio besides being a capricorn of course um i think that a scorpio energy is being misunderstood because you can be sexual or you can be someone that has a sort of magnetism with others, but I think that the Scorpio is not the kind of person that gives you the possibility to to see it if you are not intimate with them. You know, I, I think that sometimes when they when people say sexual, they 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 try to to say like, oh, that it's it's a bit like, um, um. You know that they are always looking for someone to have sex or to hook up with you know and i think that that's very disrespectful because actually scorpio is very it's very selective and it takes a while for them to actually get close to people so for you to call them like as if they were promiscuous you know i think that it's uh and everyone loves sex so 
in, in, in different aspects and in different range, but I think that to put that label on a Scorpio, and it's also a sort of pressure, you know, because it's like, oh, because he has all this energy, he's supposed to be this. When when it's a female, it's, it's, she's supposed to be a femme fatale, and, and when it's a male, he's supposed to be this sort of player, you know, and actually these are very sensitive people, and then don't... Uh, it's not easy for them to connect, you know, with people and actually to have a profound relationship as they want to. Um, at least for me, I know that having uh, a moon in Scorpio for me is not actually easy, it's not glamorous at all, because uh, for me it's like I'm really loyal, but I take my time to actually be like, oh, I like you. You know, for me, you have to sort of like go through, a, I have to go through a lot of things with you, I have to sort of like investigate you, I have to see you, like what are you all about, you know, so uh, I don't trust people right away. And this is not to play hard to get or to act my mysterious, it's more like a self-preservation because sometimes people are very very on showing you things on the superficial level but when it comes to the real stuff in life the complicated things uh, no one is there no one is around you so I think that in that sense Scorpio is a very wise sign um, they have this sort of like a special cloth where they just let their uh, close people enter you know especially when it comes to the heart um, so yes, in the case of in the case of Utah, definitely there's a strong. It's like his Scorpio energy uh, activates when he, he has feelings for someone. And he probably when he has feelings for someone or when he's attracted to someone, you can tell by his body language, or probably by the way he stares or by the way he tries to get closer to that person. It's like he's this sort of like, in a very sneaky and subtle way, but he does it. Um, but he takes his time to study the person. It's not that he's going to go, you know, like, and be open about it. Um, and also that um, he also, I believe he has Mars in, in Sagittarius. So for him, there's something about, about Utah that, um, you know, if he were just a moon Scorpio, I would say that, uh, yes, for him probably, for him being emotional, it's a sort of like very personal thing, you know, and that he's very passionate, but inside. But actually him being a sun in Scorpio makes this energy lighter, in a, in a sense that he probably uh, is not afraid to show that he's intense or that he loves to experience um, high and volatile and sort of like a bit traumatic relationships, you know, where he one day he can love you and then he can hate you and where he can be possessive or jealous, you know. I think that there's a bit, a bit of, um, there's a lot of deepness in Utah, but at the same time you can tell that he's not troubled or traumatized by the way he feels. You know, there's something that I noticed uh, with us Moon and Scorpio people. Espe especially, I noticed this with idols that have Moon and Scorpio, but their sun signs is totally different signs. They just have Moon and Scorpio, and you can definitely sense in them. And I can I can relate to this because I think I have the same trait that the Moon and Scorpio sometimes it show in in a very like. You know when you see them um, act, but when you talk to them about emotions, about something that is very sensitive or is very private, they shut down completely and they be their body language becomes rigid or they choose like prefer not to talk about certain things. They are very ev evasive when it comes to personal questions, uh, when it comes to emotional stuff, they tend to get really tense in their body, you know, they, they they just cannot find or the right words to say, or you can tell that definitely they are feeling emotional, but it's not easy to let it out, you know, because it is 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 in the moon, in the moon sign it represents a very private side of yourself that you only show in a very private uh, environment. 
uh, and around people that you trust. So in the case of Utah, him being, being a Scorpio, it's like, you know, for him it's, an, it's a, a known energy. He has it <clears throat> on the inside and he has it on the outside. First of all, for him to be complex, to be intense, to be passionate, to be, um, you know, to, to be a bit, um, 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 like having like a lot of energy for him is like comfortable you know he loves to be different he loves to have this sort of magnetism he's comfortable with being magnetic uh, this is the the difference you know so yes let's see the cards that he got he had that set of ones uh and, it, and this wouldn't be a scorpio or a scorpio or tarot reading if we didn't have the death card here <laughs> He got the Death card, the Four of Wands, and the Seven of Swords. Um, so, yes, yeah, starting with the with the Ten of Wands. I think I think Utah actually had been through relationships because I'm not saying this because he is my bias, but I think definitely Utah had had um, um, had experiences. Um, and they weren't very pleasant actually but i don't think that they are they are unpleasant or they are not um, um fulfilling because of who he is i think that it has to do more than the timing is wrong or probably about his uh his career and and about everything that he has to uh, sacrifice in order to be an idol you know and 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 i think that probably if he has a sort of relationship with someone that it's, I don't know, from Japan or someone that is a Korean, I don't know, uh, there's a sort of like, you know, a, a distance or some complications that can happen when it comes to either you are far away or you are in the same environment, but there's something about your culture and your the way you do things and the way I'm used to doing things that there's a bit of disconnection in there you know there's a bit like like we cannot really meet uh, each other's needs you know um, and and starting with the ten of, of ones I think that he definitely in the death card because we have the ten of one and the death card that both of them are talking to me about what he finds ideal in a romantic relationship is for him to not feel stressful for a relationship and not feel tired or exhausted when it comes to love and relationships. This is why I think that probably in the past our relationships can actually drain him a bit, you know, energetically. I think that sometimes he gets really moody or he gets really stressed about uh, starting to feel something for someone because somehow things get really complicated for him you know, especially with his lifestyle and with his responsibilities, he doesn't have the time, you know, he doesn't have the time for the drama as well, you know. Um, and I think that probably it has to do that he sort of have a, has a type and probably um, also being a Venus in Scorpio, probably the relationships or connections he chooses or he enters um, are a bit like chaotic or are a bit like um, complex and a bit uh, they are exciting you know they are passionate but they have a level of complexity and, and and there's a lot of misunderstandings in the middle there's a lot of like miscommunication there's a lot of like not being on the same page um, a lot of distrustfulness you know a lot of um, the very, very chaotic uh, relationship. Um, so I think that actually what he wants nowadays as something ideal is to be able to not attract those kinds of bonds or connections again, you know, and being able to be like, okay, I'm starting anew and I want to experience what it's like to not feel so tense or so oppressed or so so tired of having to deal with someone being upset with me or with someone being obsessive with me or someone being demanding with me you know and being 
and being like uh, screaming at me and shouting at me and, and being a bit aggressive, yes, he can be too, you know, because we have the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands, it, it talks about, you know, the fire element, the passion, uh, you know, the, 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 the sort of physical side of things. So I think that he definitely, I think that probably when he was younger, he enjoyed this sort of drama, this sort of like tension in relationships. He found it like, oh yes, relationships must be like this. Especially because of, if we see, I don't know, today's, uh, for example, movies and series where they sort of romanticize re toxic relationships, you know. Uh, I think that sometimes we, um, uh, the the adults and the young adults, we enter relationships ro like glamorizing a bit, you know, oh, um, the, the fact that things are difficult in my relationships and that we are arguing all the time and that we are at each other's throat all the time, it means that we love each other. So, you know, I think that he come to this realization after so many exhaustion and so many disappointments and, and hurt uh, that he actually wants something different, you know, that he wants to end the sort of pattern that he has uh, about going for people that are very hard to please, you know, people that are very, um, you know, that are also a bit like, um, um, that are complex, you know, and, and that are a bit like, it's not easy to be with them, you know, because everything you do is wrong, you know. So he needs someone that can understand him, that can understand that, that yes, he may not be available all the time and he's always busy and he has an, an image to take care. Um, so I think that there's a bit, he wants a bit of acceptance, you know, a bit of peace. Um, then we have, yes, the four of the four of wands uh, and, and, the, and the seven of swords. So, you know, the four of wands, yes, is about to be able to celebrate, to have fun times together, you know, to not get caught up in these sort of very emotional moments where you accuse each other, you know, and, and where you argue all the time. He wants a partner that actually, and I think that this has more to do with his uh, Sagittarius Mars, that actually he wants to have fun. You know, I think that the, the minute he starts to feel like he cannot smile, he cannot laugh because of he's worried about this person. He's worried about this person's feelings. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't feel like he does things right. You know, he wants some peace. He wants some uh, like balance and some like, okay, let's have fun. Let's laugh. Let's enjoy our moment. Let's not fight. Um, and then, yes, we have the Seven of Wands, that Seven of Swords, I'm sorry, that if you see the picture, I'm sorry that I cannot show you the picture, but if you see here the image of the Seven of Swords, it's actually a female sitting across the table, and she's like looking like that in the, on the table there are seven, seven swords that are all like like uh, put on, like on the rounded table, I think it's a rounded table, and they are like clockwise. And but you know the whole, the all the all the swords, the seven swords, they seem to be po pointing at her. They seem to be directing at her, and she's like looking like from afar. But she's like, oh, I know these are for me. I know that these swords are for me. I know that these swords are coming for me. So, you know, I think that the Seven of Swords also talks about how sometimes you feel like in relationships you sometimes has to be, have to be able to be like, okay, I need to walk away from this or I need to resolve myself. And probably, I think that probably people can feel like, oh, maybe he's a bit egotistic or he's selfish and sometimes when he decides to break up or when he decides to leave a relationship or a bond. But it's just that he does it because he feels attacked. You know, you know the, the source, it's also, you know, like I always mentioned, it's about communication and it's about, uh, also can be the internet, you know, so probably he does have like a, 
a tendency of getting a lot of hateful messages or actually his his partner becoming really obsessive with him over text or message or you know of internet so he's like i don't want to get those messages anymore from you so i'm blocking you so i'm slowly like removing myself from the situation so yes he can be potentially uh, like someone that ghosts people but he doesn't ghost people to actually like um to hurt them he actually does it because he comes to a period where he's tired you know where he's tired of being accused of things that he doesn't do or of being accused of being a certain type of person that he's not you know so i think actually um what he finds ideal actually uh, is to be able to walk away a bit for some time you know to have contact zero you know to slow down a bit and disappear for a period of time because he needs to center into in himself i think that what happens with yuta is that he spends so much time like being of service to others and like bringing this like taking into consideration his family taking into consideration his fans taking into consideration his loved ones so he's like what about me you know sometimes i disappear from relationships or I avoid relationships or I cut connections because I want to take care of me. I want to get back to myself. You know, I'm the source. I am important as well. So if my loved ones or my romantic partner hurts me or annoys me or actually is, I'm not happy with that person at the end of the day, I need to walk away, I need to retreat, you know, I need to, to be like, okay, maybe, maybe we will not see each other for a while, maybe we will, we will maintain a certain distance, you know, and this means like possibly like blocking you from uh, social media and stuff so he cannot, so he can be a sort of ghost, so he cannot see you uh, nor talk to you, so yes, I think that Actually, I wouldn't call this uh, this romantic. Uh, like, like I'm saying, I'm you know uh, these these readings are a sort of like I'm, I I put this label on them. You know, ideal romantic partner. But I think that since these cards are different and they are telling me a sort of a scenario, because these are not oracle cards. This is a tarot. So I think that probably they are telling me a different story about. Yuta's experience in, in, in love um, and how this has affected his choices or what he prefers or what he finds ideal. And then, um, yes, the car of the Oracle of Romantic Angels is pay attention to the red flags. So definitely, yes, red flags. So I think that he, if, he, if he does become a bit detached at the end of the day and he decides to disappear or he decides to cut connections with someone that he potentially loves very much and is in love is because he starts to see that the relationship is like um is turning very toxic and destructive you know and and also like very very hurtful you know very um that they are destroying each other you know that they are like it seems like they are like trying to kill each other you know through words through um reactions through a lot of things and i think he definitely sees that like a sort of like confirmation that probably that person is not the one and that he needs to be patient that he doesn't need to give in to his need to be uh, loved or desired you know because he's sort of like he's very aware that he has this magnetism and that probably um, potential partners get really obsessed with him because of how he is he's also very he's very nurturing he's very despite of him looking like like he's uh, hard to please uh, he's very sweet guy actually he's very loving towards the person that he that he likes or that he cares about so probably he is this sort of like um 
it seems like people don't want to let him go and even when they love all these things about him at the same time they sort of hate him you know or they want him they want him to be a sort of person that he's not they want to change him they want to transform him it seems like they they want to like i don't know if you can if this is the right word in english but they want to sort of like domesticate him like to tame him you know and actually he, you can attain Yuta. You can attain Yuta. Yuta is a wild soul. Yuta is, um, at least from what I can see here in his energy, he loves himself so much that he's like, okay, I'm not, I know I'm not perfect, but if I see these red flags and if I see that you are hurting me and that you are not giving me love, you are, you are like sort of keeping me prisoner of your of your affection, I don't want that. I want to set myself free. I want to get away from you, because I cannot. I cannot take this. I don't. I don't. Uh, he doesn't want to compromise his his self esteem, uh, or his. Um, uh, he loves himself very much, actually. Uh, I think that, and and I, I'm not saying this like you know the typical uh, cheesy phrase of love yourself. You know, no. He definitely like. He knows he he knows himself very well in the sense that he knows. He's not an easy person, but he knows he deserves to be loved. Because he's very loyal, and because he's very transparent, so I think that when he starts to feel like the other person is like trying to. Like restrain him from being who he is, or tries to, turn him into this little doll. You know, oh, you have to do what I say. Oh, you have to, like, if you love me, you have to, you know, manipulation, actually, a lot of manipulation. So he's like, no, I don't want this. I'm out of here. So this was a very interesting reading, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, but yes, this is all I got for Utah. So I hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.